Hey guys, Christian here. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to do some pretty easy and simple DIY on two very important BMW parts that are typically overlooked by BMW owners. And if not replaced, will not only cause you stress in the future, but cost you money as well. The car we're going to be performing the DIY on is my 2008 E93 BMW 335i, but the two parts we're going to talk about in this video actually apply to many, many BMW models. Let me go ahead and show you guys which two parts I'm referring to. All right, so this is what we have. So the first part is the leak detection pump. Guys, this right here is notorious for causing engine lights on BMWs. I don't think I've ever met anybody that has not experienced this at one point or another. It's very easy to swap out, but they fail easily and they cause the engine light, which gets really, really annoying. Essentially, the purpose of this pump is to diagnose uh, leaks in the EVAP system. If you've ever gotten the code DTML, like an arrow for that, yeah. This is it and it needs to be replaced. Here, let me go ahead and open it up and show you guys a better look. All right, so here it is. And honestly, it's not a surprise as to why this fails so easily. Uh, the construction is pretty much all plastic with maybe the exception. No, that's plastic as well. Plastic! Well, it's BMW, what do you expect? But anyways, this needs to be replaced. It fails easily, it gives you an annoying engine check light and it really does suck. And here's the second part, or should I say parts? The jack pads. I know, I know, it's such a simple and probably boring part to make a video out of, but guys, these are very important, especially if the ones on your BMW are even slightly damaged. No lie, this has to be the most commonly misused part on any BMW. Whether you decide to take it to a crappy local repair shop that doesn't utilize these correctly, or maybe you just have no knowledge of it and you use any kind of jack to jack up your car. These can get damaged very fast and they can cause a permanent damage to your car. I'll explain to you guys a little bit later why that is. And I'm telling you guys this from personal experience because in the past I've also misused this. You can probably see it in some of my older videos as well. But see, the truth is when I first purchased my 335i, they were pretty bad already. So I didn't really care. And I told myself that I would replace them eventually. <laughs> and here we are five years later, I'm finally replacing these uh, jack pads. Also keep in mind that if you're gonna spend your money to replace these, you wanna make sure that they last you as well. So you gotta use the right tool to lift up the car. And that's where this comes in. This is an aluminum jack pad adapter. So essentially once you replace the new jack pads, you wanna use the right tool to lift up your car. And it sits right in that square area right here and it maintains the structure of the jack pad without ruining it and guys not only are these parts very easy to diy at home they take no time to install they don't cost much neither this bosch leak detection pump is like 55 bucks the jack pads individually are 11 bucks let's say you don't have to replace all four they're 11 bucks each uh, the jack pad adapter is like 28 dollars i believe or you can just get the entire kit from ecs tune and i think they have it on sale right now for 68 bucks and that's a freaking win you get the four pads and this for 68 bucks and if you do need the leak detection pump like i said that's like 55 bucks i'm going to go ahead and leave links to all these products down in the description below if you do use those links it does help support the channel at no additional cost to you guys so if you need them information down below all right so i'm going to go ahead and replace the jack pads first since they're super easy to install you just need a flathead and that's it guys look how bad that is this is the front passenger side jack pad it doesn't even look like a jack pad anymore it just looks like poop it's so destroyed that the jack adapter doesn't even fit in between anymore. So uh, yeah, let me go ahead and lift up the car and give you guys a better look. So as you can see, this is how not to jack your BMW. The jack plate here has gone over the jack pad itself and now it's resting on the back side of the side skirt, which is ruining the paint. And worse, it can just crack right through it. Uh, these side skirts are like 250 bucks plus paint. So uh, it can get very expensive, very fast. But in my situation, my Jack pads are completely toast and I couldn't use the adapter. So I wanted to show you guys exactly why it's a bad idea to not change these out if they're in bad condition. And this is the front passenger side that I was trying to show you guys earlier. Look how bad it is. Like the edges are completely destroyed. Uh, the little section here in the middle where you're supposed to put the jack adapter, is just completely distorted. So that's why you can't fit the adapter in there. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these out, show you guys exactly how to do it, it's very easy. So as you can see on the new ones, you see the side here, these clips, that's pretty much how they're held onto the car. So what we're gonna have to do is take the flathead screwdriver and we're just gonna pry it off, which is probably gonna break the clips to this one, but who freaking cares, because we're gonna toss it out anyways. 
Okay, so it was really hard to get leverage with the flathead screwdriver, so I went and got the backside of a hammer. Should be easier to put force to pry it out. Yep, there we go. All right, so once you remove the old one, uh, if you look at where it used to be at, uh, you'll see the, the two sides here. These are where the clips are gonna go on and they're gonna hold on tight right here. So let's go ahead and get the new one. All right, so before I decide to install the new one, I have to show you the difference between that one and the one that I just took off. It's unreal. The difference is night and day. Check this out. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? This is what we call improper use, guys. Improper use. This, is, this should never look this way. Never. Like, this has zero function. Like, zero function. All right, to install the new one, it's pretty easy. You just line it up with the slots there, and then you're gonna put some pressure on it. <laughs> and you'll hear it clip when it goes in all the way. If you don't think you put it in all the way, that's fine. Put it in as much as you can, and then just use the jack to put the additional force to snap it into place. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the car, then show you guys how to use the jack pad adapter and then I'll replace the additional three jack pads and then we'll move on to the leak detection pump. So once you install the jack pad, it's very important that you maintain the condition of it. That way you don't have to replace it again. So you're gonna use the jack uh, pad adapter to lift the car from now on. As you can see from my specific uh, Harbor Freight jack, it's not gonna be like a flush fit in here. It's gonna be a little bit loose, but once it makes it into the jack pad, you're fine. So you wanna make sure you line it up correctly. So it fits right in the middle, right there. And that's it, flush fit. And then you jack up the car. And now, as you can see, the jack plate right here is nowhere near the side skirt of the car, meaning you can't damage it. And it has the right clearance so the jack pad does not get screwed up. So yeah, that's the way to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and replace the remaining three and then uh, I'll talk to you guys afterwards. Okay, so I went ahead and switched them all out. And uh, yeah, I should be ashamed of myself. Oh my God, they're all very bad. There's not even one that looks good. They all look like poop. Yeah, so if uh, your jack pads look anything like this or remotely close to this, do yourself a favor. You the, use the link in the description and uh, buy yourself a new set. There's one other thing I want to mention before we move on to the leak detection pump, and that is the jack stands that you're going to have to start using with these jack pads. Uh, this is not the correct jack stand for it. I've used them in the past because these were all beat up, um, but you're probably going to screw up the edges of them if you use this, unless maybe you just put halfway in the middle where the little boxy area is at. But that probably wouldn't be too safe. I'd probably use the flat top uh, jack stands. I've seen them on Amazon before. Uh, if I can find some here on ECS Tune-In, I'll leave a link in the description below as well. But essentially they're just flat, so that way you can put the, the, the jack pad adapter on the top of it. But yeah, this is a no-go. Guys, if you found this video helpful so far, please do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe for more BMW content. I am building a BMW E30, E46 M3, and of course I'm gonna continue here with the 335i. So uh, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so I went ahead and lifted the 335i so I can show you guys where the location to the leak detection pump is. Okay, so we're currently on the driver's side on the rear section next to the exhaust pipe. You see the shield right here and this plastic panel. So the pump is right in this area right here. Um, there's just a few bolts that I need to remove and it'll give me access to that. And then uh, once I take this off, then we'll continue. Luckily for me, for the most part, it looks like all the bolts surrounding this panel here are all eight millimeters. Nothing crazy, because you know BMW likes to do that. Just throw in a freaking curveball in there with an E-socket. Uh, so one word of advice, if you're doing this yourself, you might want to wear some safety glasses because there's a lot of rocks, dust, and particles just kind of falling that's been trapped within here for years. Um, and it can fall in your eye, and that's a no-go. All right, let's see. Let me show you guys something real quick. You see this area right here? There's actually a bolt way up there, uh, eight millimeter. That's, what's, uh, that's pretty much the last bolt holding this panel off. 
so that needs to be removed uh i was trying to figure out why i couldn't get this off and that's the reason And that's why you want to wear safety glasses because I had a few rocks that fell in my eye and it's not fun. Not fun at all. All right, so now that all the bolts are removed, it should come right off. There it is. And as you guys can see, this right here, that's the leak detection pump that we need to get to. It should be pretty easy to remove and swap out. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start and removing these connectors right up here. Uh, they look like just squeeze connectors. They should be able to come right off. All right, there's one. Uh, it's a little tough. It's probably a two-handed job for sure. Uh, got another one up here. All right, that's the second one right there. And I think I got one more, which is right here. All right, so that one's a little tough. Whew, let me catch my breath. Can I get a tire rotation, man? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, this one's gonna be a big pain in the ass for sure because of the angle and because I have the camera in the way so I can show you guys what's going on. Ah, there it is. All right, all three of them. All right, so the last thing that's needed is the actual connector to the pump, this electrical connection right here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and remove this entire unit down so I can remove the leak detection pump. The electrical connection looks pretty easy. Just pull these tabs right here and pull out. That's it. All right, so the last thing to do is to remove this bolt and this bolt, I believe they're 10 millimeters and this entire thing should drop down so I can have better access to the pump. Okay. All right, so as you can see, I dropped the entire system. Um, it's pretty difficult to get to the pump alone up there, especially because they have these awkward facing uh, T-screws here. I think they're T20s, uh, so it's just easier to drop the entire system to get access to the pump. All right, with a little bit of force, this should be able to come out. Let's see. All right, so I went ahead and removed it. This is what the old pump looks like, and this is what the new one looks like, honestly. No difference whatsoever, but internally it's probably where it's messed up and it's why it's causing a fault code. All right, you see this little rubber piece right here? This needs to be used for the new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Um, assuming that it's still in good condition, it looks like it's fine. Yeah, it still looks like it's in pretty good condition. It's not dried up, it's not cracking or flaking or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good clean and then I'll install it into the new pump. All right, so I went ahead and fully cleaned the little rubber piece. I'm gonna go ahead and insert it back into the new pump, just like this. It'll probably be much easier if you can grease this rubber piece inside and out. So that way, when you have to insert it back into the, the little setup that's right here, it'll be easier to insert, but I don't have grease with me at the moment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it this way. Okay, time to put the T-screws back in. Inserting the screws back in is gonna be a little bit tougher uh, because I think you're just making new thread within the leak detection pump. Okay, so the pump is correctly installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put this all back underneath the car. And then I'll talk to you guys once I do that. All right, all done. Okay, so the last thing to do is to run the codes on the car to make sure that that DTML code is not there anymore. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the car. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up MHD. This is the app that I use to read codes. And then I'm gonna go over to codes right here, uh, read DME codes, and boom, there you go. See, this is where it was at, where active codes was at. I had the code DTML um, and it's not there anymore, so yeah. There you go. So it was the pump. And no more engine light. Hooray. Also, quick note, guys, if you continue to have that DTML code with the check engine light after you change the leak detection pump, it could also be your gas cap. You see the rubber green seal around the gas cap right here. Sometimes these start to go bad. 
um, and you can also get that DTML error code because of a bad gas cap so you may need to replace that anyways i hope you guys found this video helpful and that you learned a thing or two if you did make sure to hit that like button it really does help me out and also make sure to subscribe for more content in the future as always thanks for watching till next time